Have you ever wondered what shit would be like if really important people had never been born? Like, what would our world look like without Mary Curie or, like, Graham Bell, the guy who invented the telephone? Would we not have TikTok? How ever would we survive? It turns out we would probably be okay. And that's due to a mind-blowing but quite common phenomena called simultaneous invention. And my brain just can't get around how much that term sounds like spontaneous combustion. And in some ways, they are very similar. Simultaneous invention is a hypothesis that most scientific discoveries and inventions are made independently or more or less simultaneously by multiple scientists and inventors. Like matter burning into flames with no apparent causation, simultaneous invention observes the ignition of similar ideas in two seemingly disconnected worlds. Hi, hello, and welcome to this episode of Geography Girl. And today is a video not based on original thought, because what thoughts are ever original? Are we not all just observing each other, taking it all in, ruminating on it, and spewing it out like it's our own garbage? At first, we might think of it as a mystery as to how multiple individuals or groups working independently might come to the same conclusions or discoveries at the same time. But simultaneous invention just hints at certain developments being ready to fall from the tree when they're right for the environment with the right knowledge, technology and social context. There is a suggestion, therefore, that certain advancements are also inevitable. There are so many examples of scientific discoveries that were made by accident, like the microwave or Viagra, uh, and my driving instructor who was insistent that his friend invented jungle music in his garage. But who am I to dispute that? Because there are many roads and avenues that lead us towards the same conclusion if you pull the thread for long enough. Let's look at some historical examples. Calculus. Perhaps the most famous example of simultaneous invention is the simultaneous development of calculus by Isaac Newton and Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz in the late 17th century. For those who don't know, calculus is a branch of mathematics that studies the rate of change, for example, velocity, acceleration and the slope of a drive and optimization okay don't ask me any more questions <laughs> whilst isaac newton was getting hit in the head by an apple and having his eureka moment about gravity leibniz was putting together a rule book for calculus the basic insights that both newton and leibniz provided were the laws of differentiation and integration emphasizing that differentiation and integration are inverse processes second and higher derivatives and the notion of approximating polynomial series okay now when they both came to publish their results there was serious beef with newton who came to his results first accusing leibniz of stealing his notes but through careful examination of their notes you can see that they came to their results independently with leibniz starting with integration and newton starting with differentiation whilst they both get credit for their calculus invention there were many ancient precursors, with elements of it first appearing in ancient Egypt with an Egyptian Moscow papyrus, which contained several mathematical problems and some workings out, but with never enough information to really understand how the formula really works. And in ancient Greece, uh, Exodus of Sinaitis developed a method of Havosation to prove the formulas of cones and pyramids. In the Middle East, in the 11th century, a mathematician, Al Hazan, came up with the concept of fourth powers. And in India, uh, Bhaskara II proposed the differential coefficient comes zero at the extreme value of a function. Are you still with me? All of that is to say is that there are clearly some context to these discoveries. And whilst they are certainly impressive, they weren't independent strokes of genius like we might like to tell ourselves. You may not know, but whilst Charles Darwin receives all the clout for his theory of evolution, a man by the name of Alfred Russell Wallace independently conceived of the theory of natural selection as a mechanism for evolution. Wallace was a naturalist and a geographer and also had travelled the world visiting Brazil and Indonesia, collecting and observing thousands of species. Following a series of unfortunate events where Wallace became lost at sea for 10 days after his ship caught ablaze and sank, losing his nose, and then catching a serious fever, the answer came to him that species were evolving by adapting to their environment. Why can't I have some kind of epiphany like that when I'm sick? 
Knowing that Darwin was working on similar research, he reached out through a letter in 1858 and the two collaborated on their theory, with Darwin publishing his theory of evolution a year later. Wallace gets almost zero clout despite writing over 20 books and publishing 700 articles and letters. But there is a geographical boundary line named after him. Wallace's line runs through Southeast Asia, dividing Asian and Australian animal groups. On both sides of the line, there are species of mammals, birds and fish that are found in abundance on one side and sparse on the other side of the line. Whilst the latter were working on the same concepts over the same years, both Alexander Graham Bell and Alicia Gray both filed patents for the telephone on the same day. February the 14th, 1876, Gray's lawyer made it to the patent office, securing 39th place in the line, but it was too late. Bell was number five and was taking all the credit. This sparked a legal battle over who was the true inventor. But as much as Bell's insistence prevails in popular culture, there must have been something in the air, as in 2002, the House of Representatives acknowledged that an Italian inventor, Antonio Micucci, had demonstrated the working telephone as early as 1860, but just didn't have the funds to apply for a patent. The light bulb has a similar story, with 23 other people building the prototype for the light bulb before Thomas Edison in 1879, and even two people filing patents and fighting with Edison over the rights. Other examples include that of the aeroplane, the steamboat, the photograph, and molecular theory. In fact, a study by Ogburn and Thomas in 1922 produced a list of 148 major inventions and discoveries that were made independently by two or more groups at the same time. So what are the contributing factors for this phenomena? Convergent evolution is a concept we see in animals that applies here. It describes the independent evolution of similar features in species over periods in time. Convergent evolution creates analogous structures that have a similar form or function that are not present in the last common ancestor of these groups. A classic example is how bats, birds and insects independently have evolved the capacity to fly. Multiple independent discoveries show an increase in incidence at the beginning of the 17th century. The 17th century was crucial in the creation of the modern worldview, freeing the shackles of religion, the occult and uncritical faith. British philosopher A.C. Grayling speculates that Europe's 30 years war from 1618 to 1648 with the breakdown of authority, made freedom of thought and open debate possible so that modern science rests its head on the millions of dead. So there must be an element of technological readiness. The tools, techniques needed to make a particular discovery become available at a certain time, enabling multiple people to come to the same conclusions. Multiple discoveries in the history of science provide evidence for models of science and technology to have evolved. Examples would be mimetics, which is the study of self-replicating units of culture, Evolutionary epistemology, which compares concepts of biological evolution with the study of the growth of human knowledge, and cultural selection theory, which studies sociological and the cultural evolution in a Darwinian manner. When we say that a scientist or an artist has been influenced by another, the concept of the latter has literally flowed into the mind of the former. So there must be a cultural and intellectual climate that makes certain ideas more accessible or more likely to be explored by various individuals simultaneous. An example would be the Enlightenment period of the 1800s, which showed a cultural shift towards science and rationality, which allowed Darwin's works to be taken up in popular culture, whereas 200 years earlier, he certainly would have been burned at the stake for heresy. I love this concept of simultaneous invention. It's a powerful reminder of how interconnected and cumulative human knowledge is. When the time is right, the same ideas can emerge in different minds across the world. And... I hope you enjoyed this episode of Geography Girl. If you've made it this far, thank you so much. I would love to see you subscribe to my channel as I would love to grow even more. And I will see you next time.